Tonight's video is all about how electric force is just like any other force. So you can use it in free body diagrams, you can use it in Newton's second law problems. You will sometimes see it come up in work problems or even kinematic problems. So I'm going to show you the application of electric force to more situations than just dealing with electrons and protons. So let's take a look at this first problem. A small 2 gram plastic ball is suspended by a 20 centimeter long string in a uniform electric field. If the ball is in equilibrium, now that word should make your brain think, okay, up equals down, left equals right. Remember, force is equilibrium. If the ball is in equilibrium when the string makes a 15 degree angle with the vertical, what is the net charge on the ball? Now, that may seem unrelated. It might be like, well, how would you know just because the ball made a 15 degree angle what its charge is? Well, I remember that the formula for electric force is F equals QE. The problem gives me the electric field strengths right here. So if I could figure out what the force has to be using like a free body diagram, then I would just solve for Q. So that would be pretty simple. So because this is a force problem, let's start out with a free body diagram. Remember, anytime forces are mentioned, just your brain should go, oh, free body diagram. All right, so assuming this problem happens on Earth, or a place with gravity, we have the force of gravity pulling that ball down. There's tension along that rope, tension. And then that electric field is pointing to the right. So there is a force to the right. Now you might argue, well, just because the field points to the right, that doesn't mean there's a force to the right. What if the ball had electrons on it? Then the force would be the left. Well, the ball moved to the right. If this was its equilibrium position and it moved over here, it's clearly moved to the right. And so there is an electric force, let's call it for now Fe, to the right. And now I just have to figure out what that force is. Now that should be fairly simple because all I need to do is up equals down and left equals right. So now let's figure out what our up and down forces are. Part of tension clearly points up. Now based on this diagram over here, I could conclude that this angle over here is also 15 degrees by the rule of alternate interior angles. And so if I'm trying to figure out what part of tension is up, the angle is touching the y-axis. So it looks to me like that would be the adjacent axis. So the cosine part of tension would be up. Let me draw that diagram again. We've got our tension force this way, and if we bring down a y-axis, this angle is 15 degrees. We're looking for the part of tension that points along the y-axis. So Ty would be T cosine 15. So up is T cosine 15 degrees. And down, pretty clear from the diagram, that's just the force of gravity. Left and right forces. Well, the rest of the tension force would be pointing to the left, and that would be the x part, which here is opposite the angle, opposite. So that would be t sine 15 degrees. And the right force, based on my diagram, is that electric force, F e. So I don't know t yet, but I could easily find it from the up equals down part, gravity, force of gravity, would just be the thing's weight. And if it's 2 grams, first we know to convert that to kilograms. 2 grams is blank kilograms. 1, 2, 3, fill in the zeros. I've got 0 0.002 kilograms. Something with 0 0.002 kilograms would have a weight of 0 0.02 newtons. You know, I just multiply by 10 since we're on Earth. So my force of gravity is 0 0.2 newtons. Well, now I can just solve this equation for t cosine 15. So if I rewrite it, t cosine 15 degrees equals 0, oh, I've got a 0 up here, 0 0.02 newtons divided by cosine 15. And if I know that tension is 0 0.021 newtons, well, still looking for that electric force, Fe, so now let's put that tension into this equation. I'll 
change colors here. So bring that down here. So we now know tension is 0 0.021 newtons. That means that 0 0.02121 newtons times the sine of 15 degrees equals the electric force. So 0 0.021 times sine 15. I get that electric force Fe is 0 0.0054 newtons. So that's my electric force. And as I said earlier when we think about this problem, once I get the electric force, I'll just divide it by the electric field strength to get F over E is Q. Why don't I clean up this slide a little bit just so we can see that. Okay, I've cleaned this up. Now I can just use the fact that F equals QE to find the charge Q on the balloon. So, if I divide E to both sides, I get F over E equals Q, where F is the force, E is the electric field strength, and Q is the charge. Now I substitute in 0 0.0054 newtons, my force. The problem gave me the electric field strength, 1.0 times 10 to the third newtons per coulomb, and that'll give me my charge Q. So I'm going to solve that out using the calculator real fast. The answer I get is 0 0.0000054 coulombs for charge, or 5.4 times 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 6 coulombs. And that is the charge on the balloon. Uh, why don't you pause for a re review question and try to figure out the number of electrons on that balloon, if that's its charge. Or rather, sorry, the number of electrons missing, because that's a positive charge. Figure out the number of electrons it lost in whatever gave it its charge. What I just showed you, using free body diagrams to figure out if an electron or if a charge is moving in a certain way in an electric field, how that balances with gravity, like I did in the free body diagram in the last question. Well, in 1909, a guy named Robert Millikan did an experiment to determine the charge of an electron using what I just showed you. Um, he took this device down here, which had an atomizer, which basically just sprays out particles but causes them to gain an electron as it sprays them out um, as a special kind of atomizer. So now you've got little, char got little charged particles floating around up here. And then he would allow those charged particles to fall through a little hole between two charged plates. So one plate would be positive and one plate would be negative. And if I remember correctly, the bottom plate was negative and positive. I've actually done this experiment once myself. And there's a little hole you could look through. So he would try to adjust how much power was going between these plates to make one of the little charges float. And then, using a free body diagram, he said, well, now that it's floating, and he got it to float right in place, not moving, um, either moving up and down at a constant speed or just it's floating there, not moving. At which point the charge was in equilibrium, either moving at a constant speed or being still. So he drew the free body diagram that said, okay, well, the electric force, Q times E is up, gravitational force, M times G is down, so now let me figure out the charge on that particle. And he found out the charge was negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. Now since then we've got that more accurate and down to several more decimals, but this is how we figured out the charge on an electron, by using a free body diagram and equilibrium, up equals down. Pretty cool. And you do need to know that. There have been AP questions, by the way, that ask, what did the Millikan oil drop experiment show? So this phrase, the Millikan oil drop experiment, should be associated in your head with the charge of an electron. Um, that would be kind of a, a easy fact recall question that you would just see on the test and be like, oh, boom, I got it. The Millikan oil drop experiment showed the charge of an electron. There are also um, AP questions, either free response or potentially multiple choice, that will say, describe the motion of a charge in an electric field. Here are two such examples, and let me show you what some good answers will look like. First example says, a proton is released in the electric field shown below. Describe the motion of the proton 
its direction, its speed, etc. So I would say the proton will experience a force to the right, the proton, and P plus is a good symbol for proton, will experience an electric force and I'll do force vector to the right causing it to accelerate to the right uh, meaning, meaning its velocity will be constantly increasing to the right. And I'm saying that because the problem specifically asked me to do speed, meaning its velocity will be constantly increasing to the right. All right. Why don't you try the electron? Maybe pause the second question. An electron is released in the electric field shown below. Describe the motion of the electron, its direction, speed, etc. So try what happens with the electron. Now you tried that. I'm going to talk through my answer with the electron, but just to remind you, do some vector review real fast. Since we've got an exam coming up. I'm going to draw my answer in vectors, whereas the question says describe, so you should actually have written your answer. All right, so electric field lines show the direction a positive charge would move. Since this is a negative charge, it will move in the direction opposite the electric field. Now that electric field will supply a force, and that force, because this electric field looks constant to me, it doesn't look like it changes as you go to the left or right, that for force should be constant, and therefore that acceleration should be constant, F net equals ma. So I'll draw some acceleration vectors that should all be the same size, showing that my electron will accelerate to the right opposite the field lines. So these are my acceleration vectors. So that will experience a force to the right, causing it to accelerate to the right. And if it's accelerating to the right, that means its velocity, which I'm going to draw in red, will constantly be increasing to the right. Okay, so it's actually the same description for the proton because we switched the direction of the field and we changed an electron. So a proton in this bottom field will move to the left, but our electron will move to the right. Field lines point in the way a positive charge will move. Another example, this one takes it a little further. A proton is moving through region 1 at constant speed in empty space, so no field in region 1. And it enters region 2, which has a uniform electric field pointing due east, that away. Describe the motion of the proton as it moves through both regions using words and graphs. Now you should be able to do the word part for sure. So why don't you pause the video, try the word part, and I'll have it written on the screen when you come back. Pause the video, write in words what will happen once the proton enters region 2. So I felt a little fancy as I wrote this. You'll see what I mean when I get to the end. The proton will experience a constant force east, causing a constant acceleration east. And I'm including the vector symbols on those, just so it doesn't look like maybe I made a typo and had a random A or F though there. If you put the vector symbol for things that are vectors, so you wouldn't do it for speed, but like F and A and V, lets the person know, oh, you really do mean velocity or force or acceleration. So the experience causes a constant acceleration east, meaning the velocity increases in the easterly direction to the east. The problem says also to describe its motion using graphs. Well, let's do a couple. The easiest to do might be an acceleration versus time graph. It has a constant acceleration, which we could say is at whatever the electric force is divided by the mass of the proton. Now, we don't have to know that number, but if we just label it on the chart, it would let the AP grader go, oh, they really do know that that would be the acceleration. And then to graph our acceleration, it's just right there. And then if we wanted to do a velocity time graph, our, we just said our velocity is constantly increasing. So our velocity would constantly increase. If we wanted to do a position time graph, now hopefully you have a long memory and could think way back to when we were playing with the motion detector, 
and say, oh, for accelerated motion, position time graph looks like that. Constantly increasing its velocity is what all of those show.